Good morning and welcome to Diamond Lake Lutheran Church where we join into this season of Advent, this new church year. It's good to have you here with us as we are stirred by the Spirit of Christ to learn, follow, and serve. A warm welcome to each of you for joining us here. Our worship begins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. For God's endless grace by your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I once gave a uh, children's message on the first Sunday in Advent. I asked, what season are we in? And of course, all the children said, Christmas. I said, no, it's actually Advent. And I proceeded to tell them about the Advent wreath, Advent calendars and chocolates, Advent trees. After the service, a friend pulled me over and gently scolded me for breaking the kids' hearts by telling them it wasn't Christmas yet. It's an argument that this friend and I have had many times before, and I still say Advent is uniquely Christian. Advent is a festival and a season of traditions and customs. It is a season that anticipates Christmas. 
the light of Jesus in our darkness. Advent is like the Jewish Hanukkah or the Muslim Eid, rituals and traditions specific to our religious flavor. It's a, a core expression of who we are as Christians. Advent is the first Sunday in the new church year. Bible readings feature John the Baptist, Elijah, the prophet Isaiah, the Magnificat of Mary. All are pointing to the Advent, the birth of Jesus. Advent comes from the Greek for coming, arrival, anticipating not only the physical birth of Jesus, but the reception in our hearts and the second coming. There is evidence in 480 that Advent was celebrated as part of the church year with fasting, much like Lent. Vatican II took much of the Lent out of Advent. Each week in Advent, we light the candles of a wreath. Three blue, one rose, and the white Christ candle. Through the centuries, the lights have been said to symbolize different things. Prophets, Bethlehem, shepherds, angels. Hope, peace, joy, love. One candle is lit each Sunday. Advent holds within it many festivals. St. Nicholas Day is celebrated on December 6th, and Santa Lucia marks the beginning of the Scandinavian Christmas season on December 13th. Handel's Messiah was written to anticipate Christmas. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel and Wake, Awake are classic examples of the Advent musical literature. The Advent calendar, another German Lutheran invention, has windows to open each day before Christmas. Likely there's a gift in the window as children learn to look forward to each day. Today, parties have replaced fasting, but we can still hold in our head and heart the idea that we celebrate the best part of Christmas, the anticipation through Advent which points us toward the child who was born in Bethlehem, whose name is Jesus. Nobody knows when he'll return to judge the dead. Though many men have tried to clarify the times that lie ahead. To some the end is ever near, to others this world will always be. I don't know how the clouds will grow, but I
this wondrous mystery. I know I won't get all things right, but when I see my Maker's face, I want to welcome in the light. Why not live in the light? Be ready for Jesus to come. Why not live in the light of God's kingdom? Why not live in the light? Be ready for Jesus to come. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Diamond Lake community. I'm Elizabeth Roberts, and on behalf of your 2020 Progressive Dinner Planning Team, I'm so excited to share with you our plans for this year's Progressive Dinner. Now, you see, may have seen our teaser in the loop, um, and I wanted to share a little bit more about our plans for this year's dinner. So instead of being able to share a meal with one another, we have instead decided to stir the spirit of giving within our community and share meals with others by partnering with the New Creations Ministries Mother Jeanette Frazier Food Shelf. So the New Creations Ministries Mother Jeanette Frazier Food Shelf is located in South Minneapolis, so they're a neighbor of Diamond Lake, and they serve families in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the surrounding communities. Now at present, they are working to serve over 200 families a week, so their needs are great. Beginning on Tuesday, December 1st, we are looking for your donations of non-perishable food items as well as feminine hygiene products and things like deodorant and toothpaste. We're also looking for donations of things like laundry detergent, cleaning supplies, um, and disinfectant wipes or sprays. You can drop those items off at the church again on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. through Thursday, December 10th. So because we are Diamond Lake and because we love to gather for food and fellowship, we will still have that piece of it. So we'll plan to make our group's donation to the food shelf on our regularly scheduled progressive dinner date of Saturday, December 12th. That same evening, we'll plan to gather together on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. where we'll share more about the food shelf's mission. And at 8 p.m., we'll gather virtually again in small groups to share in drinks and desserts to celebrate the season. As we would a regular progressive dinner, we are looking for hosts, so if you are comfortable hosting either a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet, we ask that you sign up to be a host on our registration page. The nice thing about this year's progressive dinner is that you don't have to participate in everything. We know that schedules are crazy, and with a pandemic, not everything is possible. So if you would just like to make a donation to the food shelf, and you would like to do that either as an individual or as a family, you are welcome to do that. If you would just like to participate in the um, fellowship aspect, you're welcome to do that too. But of course, we would love it if you did both. Now, um, everything will be in included in the loop, so you can watch for more information, including the registration for the fellowship meets um, in the loop so we ask that you sign up for that and that is adults only um, but everything else is available for families and we hope that this gives your family a reason to participate in giving back to our communities this holiday season if you have any questions or concerns about this year's dinner i ask that you reach out to either myself or kate sexy we're your this year's planning team and um, really, we're just so thankful for your support and your flexibility as um, we work to stir the spirit of giving in our community this holiday season. Thank you.
The Gospel reading for this first Sunday in Advent is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, beginning with verse 24. Jesus encourages his followers to look forward to the day when he returns in power and glory and to end all hardship and suffering. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree we learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, we know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you may know that He is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have occurred. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may God's grace and peace be yours in abundance as we enter this new church year and church season called Advent. Amen. The title for this homily is Waiting, Watching, and Wondering, all W's. It was once sung by the rocker Tom, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Waiting is the hardest part. As we find ourselves between two national holidays of Thanksgiving and Christmas, we have four short weeks, and this is the season of the church year we call Advent. How is it that we are to wait, and what is it that we are waiting for? I recently had a chance to see the Ken Burns documentary movie entitled Baseball. And Ken was on uh, uh, 60 Minutes just a few weeks ago. And he's done a great job of laying out what we like in America. Baseball was a wonderful, wonderful topic to cover. And as Burns had filmed this movie. He talked about Abner Doubleday back in 1839 who started the game of baseball. And even in my own family, small town baseball spread. And throughout the Midwest and through little leagues alike, baseball was America's and is America's pastime. One of the things that Burns says in the movie about baseball is the draw into the game is what we are waiting for. It's when the, it's when the, the pitcher begins his wind-up until the ball ends up in the mitt of the catcher. We anticipate and yearn and grow 
And as soon as the batter hits the ball, the cheers break out and joy is to be found. I think this is much what Jesus is getting at in our text for today. For Jesus is telling us like the batter, wait and anticipate before you cheer because the pitch is coming. And that pitch is going to be Christ our Lord as he returns. And we are told here in this text that our waiting for it will be worth it. It's hard to wait in this modern day and age when we have instantaneous information at our fingertips and in our phones. We don't do well when it comes to waiting. But you've heard the phrase before, wait for it, wait for it, and when it comes, the hit, then we are excited. Jesus not only tells us that waiting will be worth it, but he tells us to follow the seasons. Now, we don't have too many fig trees here in Minnesota, but we all have just gotten done begging leaves. We know what the foliage is, both when it comes and when it leaves. And this reminds us that the seasons themselves will come to an end. But Jesus tells us that his will for our lives will not. So friends, how do we spend these next four weeks? And what are we waiting for? I would say that the other two W's follow. Watching and wondering. When I was giving a homily, uh, when I was on internship in Marinette, Wisconsin, I always had a guy who would start looking at his watch five minutes into my sermon. He probably never even knew I was watching him. But I knew exactly how long I would have his attention. Because when he started this, I knew I better get to the point. He did not have a very long attention span, but my job was to keep his attention. So what are we watching? Are we watching the time? Are we watching our clocks? Are we watching what the world is about? No, I would say that our goal as followers of God is to look and wonder in our waiting. That might might mean that we trim our trees that we use an advent wreath, that we have calendars provided or devotions, any new practice that will help slow us down. That is how we wait and watch. And as we do so, we can also wonder. And this is what Christ is talking about when he wants us to stay awake. For we are all wondering when the suffering will end. When will the end of time come? Well, when will we end this pandemic? When will the vaccine come? When can we stop wearing masks? When will the promised one of God return. Those are all things we are wondering about. And we are told that like the seasons, we can only know so much. So, as people of God have done throughout time, they ask the question, how long? Christ says to us in this text, you don't know. 
so be ready. Stay awake and stay alert is found three times in this passage. And your strong coffee or energy drink might not be enough. It's important to have a practice, something that we do for these four weeks that will slow us down as we wait and as we watch for what's next and we wonder what God is up to. As the ancient church said the word, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, and come quickly to us as we wait. To be ready in Advent means that we will be ready for Him. For our God will bring an end to our suffering and will bring about a new beginning and will bring to us a newfound resolve and strength and hope that we so desperately need. We don't know. So friends, let us together be ready to stay alert and awake, for the time is at hand. As together we wait and watch and wonder. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our own sin and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, during this time of Advent, as we prepare the way for you, soften our hearts and open our ears to hear the many voices calling for justice and fairness in our community and in our world. Help us at this time after Thanksgiving to remain thankful that a part of Advent is being thankful for all that you have done for us and a future that you hold open for us, a future where we might serve and learn and follow. So we ask that you be with our loved ones, dear Lord, in prayers of supplication and want for our family members, for our friends, for these individuals from Diamond Lake that we hold up in your prayer, in our prayers, Wes Weber, for the Taylor family, for the Peterson family at the loss of a Brad's mother. Remembering back to Larry Christensen and the death of Joan, but thanksgiving for good memories and a future that family is present and faithful. So bless us and keep us, renew us and fill us, O oh Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Creator of the stars, may bless your Advent waiting, and long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.